coming from different part of the world, especially from, uh, from Canada. I see definitely you see Abe at the same time, I see Heather also joined from Calgary as well. So, and that part of the world is 8 a.m. right now in the morning, right? So that's why it's welcoming everyone at morning and this part is evening. So good morning and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Us uh, from Coach Kamal Hassan Network. And today is the third of its nature. And briefly why we are doing it, with whom we are doing it, uh, all of you whom you don't know as of now what we are doing, is actually we are bringing the coaching webinar series and as a part of making coaching as a familiar tools you know what are the what's the power of real coaching and what's the tools techniques process methods scientific process and ways and psychology and evidence based things we can present into this market and that's the whole objective of these webinar series along with my friend my business partner strategic partner Abe Brown. And definitely, before I introduce Abe, those who are coming new tonight, uh, I want to welcome all of you. And those who are senior, I am I'm looking into Mr. Kazi A. Mahmed to a lot of senior people also joining from, from Bangladesh. Welcome, by the way. And who is Abe and who is myself? Myself, brief introduction. Uh, um, uh, John Maxwell certified coach. And before that, I had 20 years of working experience, large, mostly with uh, five multinational companies that includes Ericsson, HSBC, Huawei, JT, Dun & Brad Street, and later on with my last assignment that was in a bank, local bank, Brack Bank. And after the last 20 years, I have transitioned myself to become a trainer, speaker, and coach. And there I got my, my stepping stone. That was the beginning with John Maxwell. And then I did a small course at Harvard Extension School, physically on leadership strategies and coaching. Apart from those, I have done some of the other programs from you know, World Bank uh, as a certification program and then from by Commonwealth in the UK. And these are the other things. Currently, I'm going through a master coaching certification program from ITD World of Malaysia. It's a year long program. And now we are, I am persuading with flourishing coaching with Abe. And I'm really excited to bring Abe. And who is Abe? Abe, he's a coach's coach. Why? Abe trained and certified thousands, thousands of life coaches and executive coaches in North America and around the world, thousands of coaches. And as a past president of one of the largest life and executive coach training certification program, certification organization rather in the world for 13 years. So Abe is focused on coaching leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs towards high performance, resilience, and over the top results in both life and business, both. Abe has also been a professional speaker for over last two decades and spoken professionally in four continents and over 20 countries around the world and has spoke to audience of tens of thousands. Now with the Global Coaching Certification Association trademarked, along with certified flourishing coaching, also trademarked, Abe and the global team are pioneering the very first, very first evidence-based coaching model that taps into psychology of flourishing but with a certified coaching practitioner lens. Abe earned his master's degree from University of Calgary. At the same time, another master's in religious education and counseling. So you know who is there in house, right? Abe having tons of experience, you know, certifying thousands and thousands of coaches in North America. And ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome my, my dear friend, Abe Brown tonight. Abe, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Abe Brown. Awesome. Abe, how are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. How are you doing today, sir? Nice to see you. I'm doing good. In fact, best. Fantastic. Uh, in fact, it can't be more than this, right? At its best and perfect. Over to you. Cool. I love it. Thank you so much, uh, Coach Camrul. And uh, welcome, everybody. So great to see you all. I recognize many of you, uh, your names, your your lovely uh, faces. 
uh, the ones that I can see and uh, the ones I can't, your picture. So nice to see you and uh, welcome. And of course, some of our friends from Canada are here as well. So what an incredible uh, series we've had so far. I'm going to share my screen and, uh, you know, in the last uh, several sessions, because this is actually the third session uh, out of three out of six. And so if you haven't yet had a chance to tune into them, would really strongly encourage you to, if you could, uh, you know, reach out to Coach Camrul and his team and get some of these recordings. But so far, you know, today we're going to look at the power of, or we have looked at, sorry, the, the power of coaching to maximize your performance. Uh, we've also looked at the power of coaching to focus your purpose. And, uh, you know, of course, today we're going to talk about the power of coaching to connect you with people. And, uh, you know, Coach Camrul has talked a lot about this idea of flourishing. We've talked a lot about it. And, uh, you know, even here in Canada, we've been asking ourselves this question quite a bit. Why are we talking about the flourishing tribe? And, you know, for us, so much of it is about moving from, from, from me to we. You know, it's, it's moving from, you know, a focus on myself and my needs and my situation and building my business to a place where we can actually grow something that is global, something that has the opportunity to reach people, not just in our city or our province or our country, but all over the world. And that's why we're so grateful to be connected with all of you, uh, you know, in Bangladesh and in different parts of the world. And, you know, I think it's a really important question to ask when you think about it, you know, why are we partnering? I mean, when you take a look at look at our team of uh, international facilitators there, you can see on the screen, you know, from over uh, 10 different countries around the world, four different continents. And that, uh, you know, seems to be growing all the time. You know, the idea is, well, why would all of these high level people get together uh, to build a flourishing tribe, uh, a model that's based around the psychology of flourishing? And I think it's because, you know, you do evolve in your business to a place where, you, you stop thinking about the next sort of contract or the next sort of deal. And you start thinking about how can I increase my impact? You know, I really believe this and you might want to write this down that the, the most important question for you is not income, but impact. And if you can figure out impact, then income will always follow. Now, I understand we all need to have income. We have to take care of our families and the people that we love. We have to ensure that, you know, we care for the people uh, that uh, we're responsible for. And so in no way would I ever suggest that we shouldn't be doing that. But I can tell you that the more you focus on impact in terms of reaching people, serving people, making a difference in people's lives, the more you're going to start to see your income reflect that. Okay. It's almost a, 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 you know, a, a paradox that the more I focus on me, uh, the less I have, uh, but the more I focus on others, the more I gain. How many of you with me on that here today? Right. And if you agree with that, why don't you just put that in the chat window? And this is what we're talking about. This is uh, servant leadership, uh, which is, which is this idea of offering and adding value to others. So today, that's really what we want to talk about. We want to talk about the power of coaching to connect you to people. And to, to kind of open this uh, sort of talk here today, I want to tell you about a three-day walk in the woods that changed my focus. And I'm going to suggest it, 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 it actually changed my life. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, one of the things uh, I also have done, Coach Camerol didn't mention this because you know, you get to a certain age, and how many of you are there where if you're asked to list your bio, it's way too long to, to list on one page. You know, at least in Canada, you know, these career coaches, they tell us to try to get your resume down to a page or two. And, uh, you know, I guess you could do that if all you're doing is bullet points. But, but how many of you know that it misses the nuance? And so my career actually started right now. I'm not sure if I should be ashamed to admit this or not. Uh, I'm still young. I'm 48 years old. And uh, my career, I've been uh, professionally working since I was 20. So when I was 20 years old, I received my first job as a pastor in a Christian church. Okay, so that was my job initially. And, uh, you know, I was at what they call a youth pastor. So my role was to work with the youth. And that was sort of 21 and under. 
And so I was looking after them. I was only 20 years old. And so that made sense. And then a couple of years of doing that, uh, there was what is called the lead pastor. Uh, and he decided that it was time for him to move on. And so, you know, he uh, went to wherever he went. And so the church leadership put together what's called the search committee. And their goal was to find the replacement for this lead pastor. Now, I was over here working with the youth, and I was happy to do that. And, uh, you know, so this search committee started to look right across the entire country and uh, try to find somebody, anybody, to come and take this little church over. And after searching for six months, they couldn't find anyone <laughs> who wanted to take this over. Now, have you ever been the last choice? <laughs> okay. I'm not, I don't mean the third choice or the fourth choice. I mean, you know, you, you're the last choice. I mean, they didn't, you, you were such a, of a last choice that they didn't ask, even ask you. Uh, they had searched the entire country, couldn't find anyone who wanted to take over this little church. And so I think they looked over at me and they, at that time I was 23 years old and they, they said, well, we know Abe, uh, you know, he's cheap because he's young. So why don't we offer it to him? <laughs> and so, you know, I was the last choice. Uh, certainly not the first choice. And I decided that I would take this role on to become the lead pastor of this church. Okay, so how many of you with me? Are you still following me, right? So I take this church over. It was really small. There was only 60 people in it. And uh, I don't want to get into a long discussion of finances, of churches and charities and nonprofits. But if you have only 60 people, you're probably not going to last for long financially, because that's just the, 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 the financial economic realities. And so, you know, I took this church over. And uh, because I was such a great orator, uh, such an incredible public speaker, and so good with people, Heather, uh, it wasn't long before I had taken this church of 60 people down to 45. <laughs> okay, so I had uh, whittled it down from 60 people to 45 uh, in, within six months. And uh, that was quite a skill and a talent. So we had lost 25% uh, of our people. And now... Uh, you know, it was really bad. I was not going to get paid. You know, that's kind of how bad it was, right? Like we we had a couple of choices, pay the mortgage or pay me. And uh, you know what they were going to choose? Pay the mortgage, right? Because that's the physical asset and we don't want to lose that. And so at this point, I was 23 years old and I was incredibly stressed out. I mean, how many of you ever been stressed? Am I the only one on the call who's been stressed, right? Because I was feeling the pressure. How many of you have felt the pressure before? And uh, the pressure was on. And uh, it was so bad at the time that I was uh, having pressure headaches every day. Uh, I wasn't uh, you know, able to get out of bed on time. Uh, I wasn't uh, even able to drive because drive my car because I was feeling so much stress. And, uh, and so I, I told myself I, I need a, a solution. And I didn't have any money to pay any big coach or consultant or fixer. And so I said, I'm going to go to the woods, legit. That's what I did. And I'm going to take a personal retreat. Now, how many of you have ever taken a personal retreat? Okay, a personal retreat, a time where you get away. And even though this was 25 years ago, uh, you know, at that time, I had a cell phone, a little old flip phone. How many of you remember those flip phones? <laughs> okay. And, uh, and I left that at home. And uh, I went to this, this cabin in the woods. Uh, you know, we didn't, it didn't have uh, even running water. And, and I, I was going to fast and pray and get an answer uh, from God. That, uh, that's what I thought. And so I go out to the woods and I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm praying and I'm, I'm, I'm journaling and I'm reading scriptures and I'm trying to say, God, what is going on? I'm failing miserably and you aren't helping <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I need an answer. Now, how many of you have been there before? Okay, am I the only one who's been like at the end of my rope? And now I'm even blaming God because somehow God's not helping me, right? And uh, and that's kind of what I thought. And so, you know, after two and a half days, I have to tell you, uh, I had no answers. I had nothing. And now I was angry because not only, uh, you know, had I come out to the woods, but I hadn't eaten any food <laughs> <laughs> for two and a half days. And over here, you know, in Canada, we call it hangry. Uh, this is when somebody's hungry uh, and, and uh, now they, they're, they're angry. You, you find that you get grumpy when you haven't eaten. And, uh, 
And so I was going to go home in about six hours. And I was out in the woods all by myself. And, and I was praying, but I wasn't really praying at this point. Like there was no one around for miles. And I was shouting. I was shouting at the trees and I was shaking my fist up at the heavens. And I was saying, God, why don't you come on down here? Cause I need an answer and you're ignoring me. And, you know, to be honest with you, I was even, uh, I was swearing at God, you know, challenging God, come and talk to me. Right. Cause I was so mad. And uh, I think that what happened was at that point, I was just exhausted. I hadn't eaten for three days. I was tired. I was angry. And I ran out of, out of steam. And I, I had my resignation letter ready to go. And I, I, I said, I'm going to go back uh, to the town that I was in. And I'm going to hand this over to the chairman of the board. And then that's it. I'm done because I'm failing. And just as I was about to do that, when I was standing in the woods there that day, and there was not a, a human being around for miles, but <laughs> lots of chipmunks and rabbits and squirrels here in Canada, by the way. And uh, I, I heard a voice speak to me. And the voice wasn't on the outside. The voice was on the inside in my heart. And I want to tell you what the voice said. And this, this changed my life. This was 25 years ago. The voice said this. He said, Abe, I need to ask you a question. And I'm like, okay, first thing I've heard in like three days now, two and a half, three days. What's the question? And the question was this. When is the last time you healed any wounds that people were feeling? And I thought about that for a moment as I was standing there in the woods, right, by myself. And I, I realized I hadn't healed anyone's wounds for a long time. The question then continued, when was the last time you solved any problems that people were facing? And I realized that I, I hadn't solved anyone's problems. Matter of fact, I hadn't been focused on solving anybody's problems because I was completely focused on solving my own. You know, why was this church not growing? Why was my financial stability on the line. And then the, the, the voice continued, when was the last time you answered any questions that people were asking? And I realized I hadn't sat down with anyone and tried to help answer their questions for a long time because I was so busy trying to get my own questions answered. And the voice went on and said, you have been so focused on yourself that you have not seen that as a pastor, as a leader, doesn't matter if it's spiritual leadership or business leadership or leadership in the home or in the family. You have been completely focused on yourself and not focused on the people that you're supposed to serve. You haven't healed any wounds. You haven't answered any questions. You haven't solved any problems. You haven't given anybody who is in a place of despair or discouragement any hope. And as I, and as I was standing there in those woods that, that day, it was like this immediate shift occurred within my heart and my mind and my perspective. It was like I realized that I was failing, but I wasn't failing because I didn't have money in the bank account. I wasn't failing because there weren't people in the seats. I was failing because my entire motivation was wrong. Are you still with me, right? I was out to lunch, okay, in my perspective as a leader. I thought that all of these people, uh, were supposed to serve me, that all of these people were supposed to take care of my needs, that all of these people were here so that I would be okay, I would be secure, I would be stable. And I realized in that moment in the woods by myself, it, when we, with God speaking to my heart, there was no priest, there was no pastor, there was no imam, there was no one who was, was the go-between. God was speaking directly to me and said, if you will go back and serve people, I will take care of you. And so I got into my car and I went home uh, with one decision that had been made. And that decision was to serve people. That I was going to give everything I had with whatever small talents and gifts and abilities that I had present. And I was going to serve people with all my heart. And I have a question for you here today. And here's the question What if your focus was changed by a walk, but your fruitfulness? remain stuck because of your approach. So, 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 I, so, so I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna reframe that. What if I had gone back to my home community and worked with that church? And I'm happy to say, by the way, I went back and I'm happy to say that within a year, everything turned around completely. 
And by the time I left, we had three, four times the number of people. The financial situation changed completely. Everything changed completely because I changed my approach. But what if my focus was changed, but I didn't change my technique? I didn't change my approach. How many of you would agree with me when I say that I would still have the same results that I had been having? Though the walk changed my focus, here's what's important. Coaching changed my fruitfulness. Now, fruitfulness is what you produce. And though this walk in the woods changed my focus, I needed something to shift in terms of how I was relating to people that would elevate my effectiveness and take me kind of from zero to hero. Okay. I mean, how many of you want to go from zero to hero? How many, how many have you ever been a zero before? You know, I was a big fat zero. I'll tell you what. And, and I, I knew that, that I needed to change, but I didn't know how until I tapped into the power of coaching. Coaching changed my life. Coaching allowed me to move from having a heart to help and serve people, to be effective in leadership, to be effective in business, and yet to actually now figure out how to do it. And here's why. Because coaching introduced me to a neuroscience approach to working with people. I'm going to say that again. Coaching introduced me to a neuroscience approach to working with people. Now, you might be sitting there uh, wherever you are in Bangladesh, or maybe you're in Canada, and you're saying, well, why is a neuroscience lens important for working with people? Like, why do we need a neuroscience lens? I mean, what is a neuroscience lens? Well, a neuroscience lens is really this idea of understanding how the brain functions. You and I, might be raised in different countries. We might have slightly different skin colors. We might have different hair colors, different eye colors. We might be different gender. We might have different levels of education. But how many of you know our brain functions the same, okay? I'm telling you what, I have been to five different continents. I've been to over 20 different countries. I've spoken on stages. I've sat in boardrooms. I've been in coffee shops in Nairobi, Kenya. I've been in Dubai. I've been all over Asia. I've been all over North America. And if there's one thing I've discovered, it's this, that people's brain fundamentally works the same. And I think what happens to us is that we personalize a lot of our interactions with people far too often. I'm going to say that again. We personalize. In other words, we make it all about us. I was making my failure as a leader in this church as a 23-year-old pastor I was making it all about me. Now, it was kind of about me, but it really wasn't about me. It was about the fact that I hadn't yet learned how to work with the structure and the architecture of people's brain. And when I could figure out how the human brain works, no matter the color of your skin or the religious or spiritual background that you have, or even the gender that you are, if I could figure out how the brain works, and then as a leader, as a coach, aligned to that, my effectiveness would increase exponentially. See, here's what I've discovered with a lot of us. And some of you on this call today, maybe you're doing this too. We make it about us rather than about them, rather than about their experiences from the past and how human brains in general work. And so understanding, and this is the critical thing, please Write this down. Get this in your heart. Get this in your mind. Understanding neuroscience allows us to depersonalize. I want you to imagine you're depersonalizing your interactions, but at the same time, you're increasing your empathy. So, so you would say that, that if I depersonalize, well, then maybe I'm not going to have as much empathy. But actually, it, the opposite is true. You depersonalize the interaction because it's no longer about you. But now what happens is your empathy increases because it's all about them. And I call this connecting with people by using their brain. Okay, I'm going to use their brain in order to connect with them. You see, here's the point, folks. If I understand how the brain works, your brain works the same as mine. We've all got the same kind of brain. Now, there's different things in that brain. 
but the basic brain architecture is the same. And so if I understand how the brain works, I can utilize that knowledge by operating more effectively in my interpersonal relationships, in my leadership, and in my coaching, and in my professional career. And how many of you think that would be awesome? Because all of a sudden, your effectiveness goes up. You see, some of you are looking for keys. You're looking for the secret to how you can work with people more effectively. And what I'm giving you here, and I'm going to be giving you, is the key to that. And so I want to start all of that by saying this. The best coaches, the best leaders, the best executives create brain-friendly environments, okay? A brain-friendly environment. And they reap the reward in terms of productivity, performance, staff retention, retention, and engagement levels. So why don't we start by sharing some brain basics, okay? A couple of brain basics. The first thing that, that is so important to understand, and neuroscientists have, have actually tracked this. You know, they, they, can, they can hook up electrodes to your brain, essentially, ways of measuring your brain signals, and they can see your brain activity. Here's the first thing that they've discovered, that five times per second, your brain is unconsciously scanning the social environment. What's the social environment? Well, the social environment is anytime you're in a room with people, anytime there's people around you. And what happens is five times per second, that's a lot. Okay, five times per second, your brain is not sending the signal to your lungs to breathe. <laughs> you'd probably die because you'd be breathing too much, right? I mean, five, but, but five times per second, your brain is looking around, this little radar scanning the social environment and is asking itself, is it safe here? Am I going to be accepted? Am I going to be acknowledged? Am I going to be validated? How are people going to see me? Are they going to respect me? And when your brain feels safe, what happens is that it can operate at its most sophisticated level. But when it does not feel safe, it's fight, flight, or freeze. So what that means is your brain either runs, goes to war, or is completely immobilized. And the other thing that we have to understand about the brain is that in every relationship, every single one, we either put up a wall or a bridge. I want you to imagine this for a moment. Now, what's the purpose of a wall? The purpose of a wall is to protect. So now what happens is I'm, I'm, I'm operating in a protective way because I don't feel safe. Therefore, I keep everybody at a distance. The other way is that I operate with bridges. Now, what's the point of a bridge? Well, I mean, imagine I'm on one side of the river and you're on the other. There's, there's a river between us. There's a gap between us. But the purpose of a bridge is now let's connect that gap so that you're not over there. I'm not over here. But all of a sudden now we have created a bridge. Now, when I understand that, that every person either puts up a wall or a bridge, all of a sudden, I depersonalize the interaction because I recognize that that's the human condition. And then what I start to think about is how do I create safety in the relationships that I have with people? Because if I create safety, then what happens is that I'm dealing with bridges rather than walls. And how many of you think it makes a lot of sense to deal with bridges rather than walls? It makes so much sense to be that kind of individual who has all kinds of people wanting to connect to you rather than protect them, them, themselves from you. We don't want to be that kind of leader that people don't feel safe around. We want to be that kind of leader that people feel extremely safe around so that that bridge of connection can go up. You see, here's a, a very important point. Something that will change your life is that when people feel safe around you, they will accelerate in terms of their growth. But when they feel afraid, of course, their growth will be stunted. And, you know, this is such a powerful, powerful principle. And so maybe one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves is, well, then how can we help people to become uh, to feel safe. And, you know, I want to I give you a little bit of research on this. 
I mean, how many of you know there's a big difference between IQ and EQ? Okay, right? <laughs> I'll tell you, when you're young, you think the most important thing is IQ. You know, I just got to be smart. I want to be the smartest guy in the room. I want to be the smartest guy on the team. I want to be the smartest girl in the group. And, and then what happens is you, you actually run into a bunch of really smart people who are actually dumb in how they interact. How many of you have met people like that before? Like they're, they're brilliant in terms of IQ, but really not so brilliant in terms of how they interact and connect with people. And all of the research and all of the data that we know actually says that EQ long-term, in, in other words, emotional intelligence, is far more important than IQ, which is just regular intelligence. Now you need both, but you wanna work on honing that EQ. And there's this idea in EQ or emotional intelligence of what is called resonant leadership. Resonant leadership. Now you might say, well, what is resonant leadership? Well, here's a a little bit of research on the screen, and I know there's a lot of information there, so I'm going to try to break it down as simply as I can. Current research that was done at Case Reserve uh, Western University in the United States identified an association between resonance and effective leadership. So I want you to think about that. So you got this thing called resonance, and then you have effectiveness and leadership. Now, what is resonance or what is resonant style leadership? Resonant style leadership signifies the compassionate nature of the leader and high levels of emotional intelligence. Being dissonant, on the other hand, so you have resonant leadership and then you have dissonant leadership. You don't want to be dissonant. You want to be resonant because dissonant leadership is dictatorial, it's inflexible, and it's purely objective, meaning there's no room for nuance. There's no room to tailor an approach to people. So check this out. Using fMRI scans, which allow scientists to scan the brain, scientists ask managers to reflect on their experiences when a leader was resonant or dissonant. Now check this out. 14 areas of the brain lit up when they were thinking about resonant leaders, but only six lit up when they were thinking about dissonant leaders. So think about that. If you are resonant as a leader, meaning you are compassionate, you're emotionally intelligent, people's brain lights up when they think about you. But if you're seen as dissonant, meaning you're distant, you're inflexible, you don't have any empathy, you don't have any compassion, only six areas of their brain light up when they think of you. Here's the point, folks. Dissonant leaders equals disengaged people. Dissonant leaders equals disengaged people, whereas empathetic leaders equals engaged people. And so, you know, simply what this means is that resonant leaders trigger attention. It triggers social consciousness. It triggers positive connections in their employees. Well, dissonant leaders activate negative emotions, disrespect, restricted attention, and reduce social consciousness. Resonant leadership styles, this is what's amazing, also help in developing trust through the discharge of oxytocin. And if you know anything about oxytocin, you know that oxytocin is that wonder hormone in the brain. It really allows us to thrive when we're around people and to feel as though that trust-based relationship is exactly where it needs to be. And so thank you so much for that. Now, I just want to close this here today by thinking about this question. How? Can I, as a leader and as a coach, create meaningful connections? This is critical because if resonant leaders cause people's brain to light up, then I want to be that. I want to be that kind of leader. And even though I didn't know any of this language, back to my story 
as a 23 year old pastor. I didn't know any of this research on neuroscience at that time. I didn't know any of the sort of the research on, you know, how it is that people's brains sort of think. I, I do know that instinctively I started working instinctively on how it is that I could make meaningful connections with people. And here's a couple of things that I discovered. And I, I want to use the, the sort of the language of just three simple things, A, B, C. The very first thing that we, we need to do when we want to create meaningful connections is to acknowledge others. I guess the best way to think about this is to celebrate one another. Celebrate one another. You know, it's amazing to me what happens when you begin to celebrate people. You know, it's amazing what happens when you begin to acknowledge people in terms of their greatness and in terms of their capacity. Now, you know, there's uh, an, an author and uh, she's now also an anthropologist and she's excellent. Her name is Dr. Angelus Arian. And, you know, Dr. Angelus Arian wrote a book and it's called The Fourfold Way. And if you have a chance, I would encourage you, if you can, at some point to pick it up. Because Dr. Angelus Arian, in this book, The Fourfold Way, she talks about the fact, and this is really, really important, that indigenous cultures worldwide practice the art of acknowledgement. That's what they do. They practice the art of acknowledgement. Now, you might say, what is the art of acknowledgement? The art of acknowledgement is figuring out how to acknowledge four key areas of an individual, four key areas. The key areas are number one, their skills, number two, their character, number three, their appearance or the energy that they show up with, and number four, the impact. That, that we've made on others. Now, I want you to think about this as a leader. I want you to think about how can I shift my interactions with people so that I spend more time doing this, this acknowledgement. You know, imagine if you walked into every relationship and the first thing you started thinking about was how you could acknowledge the other person. You know, Coach Camerol, it's so great to see you today. I want to compliment you for your incredible skills, your passion for helping people to learn. You're an excellent teacher. You're an excellent coach. And you have a skill when it comes to working with people. And I have to tell you, not only do I appreciate your skills, Coach Camerol, but I appreciate your character, that you're an individual who values integrity. You value family. You value the things in life that are most important. And not only that, but I love the fact that you show up with such great energy. You show up with excellence. You want to do your best in every situation. And that is seen and heard by everyone around you. And not only that, but because of all of those things, Coach Camerul, you are making a profound impact on your community. You're making an impact on the people that you love, the people that you care about, and even people that you don't know. Now, imagine if you started every interaction like that. How many of you think that you would have a pretty good following? <laughs> okay, like imagine if you, not, not flattering people, I, I don't mean being flatterous or being insincere, but from the heart, you just were an individual who acknowledged people. I gotta tell you what would happen is your business would go up, your, your network would go up, your leadership would go up, your coaching would go up. You would be surrounded by people who want to be around you. Why? Because every time they get around you, you make them feel better about themselves. That's the key to coaching, and that's the key to leadership. So that's the first thing that we can do to create meaningful connections is, number one, acknowledge others. The second is to be authentic. Now, this one might almost seem the opposite. And I'll tell you why. You know, um, when, you, when you practice the first one, which is acknowledgement, 
it sounds like it's all positive. But here's the truth. People know that not everything about them is positive. <laughs> How many of you know that? Like if you give me a compliment, that feels nice, but I know me and I know that not everything about me is all that great. Actually, there's some things about me that aren't great. And so the next step is to be authentic, to be honest. If there are concerns, if there are issues, if there are differences that we might have, to be authentic, to, to have the courage, because it takes courage to be authentic, to have the courage and the authenticity to, to say, you know, even though all of those positive things that I acknowledge about you are still true, I wonder if we can talk about this other thing, because this other thing is important. Now, you might say, well, if I'm honest and authentic with people, I might hurt their feelings. And, and, and how many of you agree that that actually might happen? You might hurt their feelings. But here's what I've discovered. People will respect you more if you are authentic rather than if all you do is flatter them. The third thing I've discovered when it comes to creating meaningful connections is to communicate. Communicate, communicate. And once you think you've communicated enough, then what you need to do is communicate a little bit more. Because you can never communicate enough. And uh, I'll tell you what, as a leader and as a coach, you have two ways that you primarily communicate, and so do I. The first is verbal communication, and then the second is nonverbal. And I can tell you that both are critically important, but your nonverbal communication might be even a little bit more important than your verbal. So the point is don't just speak, but back it up with what you do, right? So, so don't just be a talker, be a shower. Don't just be a person who talks a good talk, but, but who doesn't walk a good walk. So I hope that this has been meaningful for you here today. I'm so excited because in October of this year, we're launching our certified flourishing coach training. It's gonna happen not only in Canada, but in Bangladesh and in many other countries around the world. And we would be so grateful for you to be a part. So you can go to certifiedflourishingcoach.com and get lots of information. And on that note, I'll just uh, happily turn it back over to our coach, to Coach Kamrul. And uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to such a lovely group of people today. Thank you. Thank you, Abe. So that was amazing. Uh, how was that to you? May I ask you, uh, how did you enjoy, how did you experience last 40 minutes, I mean, less than 40 minutes in one word? What would be that? You know, to me, it was amazing, amazing. Why? Number one reason is brain, right? How our brain works, you know, how your brain and others' brain works. I would love to see your feedback, you know, in one word. What did you experience? Great, great, amazing, flourishing, okay. Nourishing, deep and beyond, mind blowing. Hang on, don't blow your mind. Stay here. We need to do something more. <laughs> Amazing, enriching, awesome, great, great. Okay, need more sessions from Brown, sir. Okay, yeah, okay, hang on, definitely. Great. So, next 15 minutes, we are, open, uh, we are opening up for you to have questions to Abe, right? For what? Regarding flourishing. Flourishing, right. So one thing I want to tell you before I hand over to Abe again, you know, what it is flourishing. Let me tell you the truth. I have been experiencing flourishing, then languishing in last one and a half year. Then that of any time, frankly speaking, in my life, in my career, any time. And today, now is best ever I am experiencing. You know what? The flourishing is to me is actually let go, let it happen, detach, no worry. Let it be, right? Life happens like blossoms when you let it happen, right? Would you agree with me? Things that you cannot control, things that I cannot control. Why do I worry? Why do I worry about what's happening outside? Why do I worry about what others thinking? Why do I worry about what economy is doing? 
worry about what can I do for myself to flourish. And again, connecting with this point to A, others are excited, not because that I'm part of the flourishing global uh, teaching team or you know faculty member, but I'm excited that because of you, all of you are going to experience this amazing flourishing. So there are different of coaching methods and, and modalities. So Abe, if you can share those, right? Uh, often we get questions. What are the different coaching certifications flourishing is going to introduce? I guess this is one of the questions. And any of you are raising hands, I would ask and open a floor to you. Yes, first of all, I'm opening up to Mr. Kazi E. Mahmed, the founder of Bold and the seasoned trainer, speaker, and coach from our country. Yes, Kazi Bhai, I'm absolutely delighted and grateful to you for your time. Please have your question. You are muted. You need to unmute, please. Yes, yep. all right. Thank you. Now, now I could unmute. Thank you very much. It's, it's great. Um, I don't know how you, uh, Mr. Mr. Brown or Abe, how you, how you call yourself. Um, I just want to quickly mention, um, I'm, I'm a pretty senior guy. I've been there, done that. Um, I also work in seven different countries and I, I'm based in Bangladesh as well. Uh, visited your country twice uh, because of my family lives there, my brother. But the point I'm trying to make today, I learned something very new and very uh, fresh and uh, transforming actually. You mentioned at one point that we personalize, we see things only from our point of view. And yet, if you take help from neuroscience, anywhere in the world you went to four or five continents, we actually human beings think in very similar ways as FMRI shows. Amazing insight. I don't want to say much. My takeaway is huge. And thank you, Kamrul, for, and if the opportunity comes, I'll be very happy to promote, to even join. Let's see how, how things move. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having Abe in our country. Thank you. I just it's have Abe. a program uh, from nine o'clock, as you probably know, so I would leave if you if you allow me. Uh, sure. Don't don't take it otherwise. I have my own live program starting a few minutes from now. Thank you. No problem, Thank you, sir. Abe, Abe, how you uh, you want to respond to Mr. Kazi? Yeah, no, I, I very much appreciate that, uh, Mr. Ahmad, and uh, grateful for your uh, you know your feedback. I I think that it was a revelation to me as well. Uh, sadly, uh, I think that the media. Uh, at least in North America, paints this picture that everybody's so different, right? That everyone, you know, who's not you or your skin color or your religion is somehow other. And um, the problem with that is, is now people are going into their lives thinking that everyone else who doesn't look like them or worship the way they worship or act the way they act is, is some um, alien. And uh, I was so happy to realize that, that that's a complete lie, you know, that, that we all care about the same things, that we all love our family. Uh, we want to protect the people that we care about. And, you know, as a coach and as a leader, when I focus on that and when I think about how I can serve that in someone else, it just changes the game completely. Rather than approaching them thinking, oh, you're different from me, you're, you're on that side, I'm on this side, all of a sudden, we're all starting on the same side. And, uh, you know, that, that, that relationship can, can shift when that mindset shifts. And so I love what you're saying. I'm grateful. And I Thank hope uh, one day we get to meet in person. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kamru. Mr. Kamru. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kamru, uh, can I have a question? Yeah, so if you uh, kind of raise your hand, then probably I could locate you, right? Because before that, uh, Marjia Tahrima uh, Tahrina, she has raised hand. Would you mind if I ask her first? Because she has already raised no her problem. hand. No, no problem. Zoom hand. I mean, Zoom hand, right? <laughs> Let it be. Yes, Marjia Tahrina, right? Uh, that would be actually justifying because she's waiting on the queue. All right. Yes, Marjia. Marjia. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, the session was very awesome. I really, very enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Brown and Kamal Bhai also. So I have a question to Mr. Brown that you say, uh, four universal uh, categories of human acknowledgement. Here, I have questioned, uh, we're getting one point. 
appearance or energy and appearance is different thing energy is totally different thing so how could you connect with each other because both are different things Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, thank you for your, your very intelligent question. I appreciate that. Um, and interesting, uh, the reason I, I, I put appearance or energy is, uh, you know, in the research that this anthropologist did, what she was really trying to communicate was how people show up, you know, and so when you show up, you know, when you come to present, uh, when you show up at a family meeting, when you show up at a professional event, when you show up on the job, there's sort of two aspects to that. You know, I think the first is like, how do you, how do you look, right? Of course, because that is something that other people perceive, right? So they, they don't have, they can't see your heart. They can't see your mind. Uh, they can only see how you choose to show up. But, but then energy is, is the other side of that because I, I'll use a funny example. Let's just say you showed up and you're some supermodel and you look perfect, but imagine you are a negative or toxic person. <laughs> you know, We've all met people who had physical beauty, uh, but they didn't have inner beauty. And very quickly, they looked ugly to us. You know what I'm saying? On the other hand, we've, we've met other people who might not look great on the outside if you just judge on the surface, but they bring such a compassion and a positive energy to the table. And so how you appear, how you show up, the energy that you bring, in a lot of ways, in my view, it's, it's almost all one, you know, because they complement each other. But I find in our society, I'm not sure how it is in Bangladesh, but certainly in North American society, people overemphasize the external. And, and it's, I'm gonna beautify myself on the outside. Whereas on the inside, they may not have that positive energy that is the very thing that people really need. Yes, people want me to look professional. That's important because that denotes a respect for them. But if I look really good, but I don't follow it up with that positive, warm, loving, welcoming energy, then it really doesn't work as well as I think. And so I, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but uh, I hope that helps. Definitely. Thank you. Yes, the next question, before we go, a little bit announcement from House, that is, as you have heard from Abe, Abe Brown, so a lot of people are confused what to call Abe or Abe. Both is okay, but it's preferred Abe. Oh, that's okay, Abe, right, that's easy, Abe. So Abe, and uh, we, uh, we get some questions, some questions, what are the types of coaching are going to be provided by Flourishing, right? Abe is going to show that one and number two is as you know as you've heard already we're going to launch in october so those who are interested to be in the first batch right uh, to be taught by uh, uh, flourishing global teams so please register your interest wherever you are right you can be a you know a ceo head of hr you can be a trainer speaker coach you can be team leader or even if you're a businessman or if you're thinking to do something at your own. It doesn't matter wherever you are. It matters most, as Abe said, right? How to connect people, how to lead people, how to inspire people, how to influence people, how to impact their life overall. So that's the things. So, so put your interest on. We're going to reach you out on the first batch and definitely you're going to get some amazing benefit. Yes, Abe. And also this, the next question, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. So would you mind please also to ask again? Yes, right. I'm uh, Brigadier General Muzammal. Thank you, sir. Thank you okay. for joining. Okay, I'm a retired soldier. Now, I have a question to Mr. A. Brown. Yes, um, uh, first let me thank you for a, a nice uh, presentation. 
Thank now, you. I have a question. I had a, I have a previous experience of flying aircraft. As a pilot, as pilot, I learned uh, that uh, uh, while uh, to have maximum concentration, you need to raise your, you keep, need to keep your sugar level at the highest level. Now, yes. and you say that at um, human brains, they uh, get distorted five times in a second. Yeah. Now, if my sugar level is at the highest level, which comes every after, uh, just after one and a half hour of taking some milk, so will it happen every time, even when my sugar level is the, at the highest level, number one? Number two is that, and um, uh, by practicing that, I used to practice that uh, once I was a young to raise my sugar level, even I used to take some sweets sometime, a cup of tea with sugar. But now at this age, possibly it's difficult for me. Now, what do you think, how to keep that sugar level at the peak level, uh, at the peak? That's a great, great couple of questions. And thank you for them uh, very much, sir. I think on your first question, um, you know, five times per second, uh, what they've actually discovered is that uh, there is a massive amount of calories that are burned by your brain. Your brain actually burns, um, I think it's around one third of all of the calories that you burn in a whole day, right? All happen right here. And, and so if you think about it proportionately, right, it, it's, it's not one third of your body but because your brain is functioning all the time. So your brain has this incredible override capacity to utilize a disproportionate amount of the energy that's available. Now they have discovered as well that people who have significant levels of anxiety will scan for sure five, six times per second because they go through life anxious and afraid. And there are other folks who are quite secure, not nearly as anxious or afraid. And for them, it may be three or four times per second. And so, you know, I, I think that everyone, everyone's brain regulates it slightly differently. But if you understand that it's three to five times per second for the average individual, that really helps you to have some insight into what's really going on in those social interactions. Now, in terms of keeping your sugar level high, uh, I think that that's important. Uh, one of the other ways that we generate energy in our body, I believe is, is uh, well, two other ways, we know this scientifically is exercise and sleep. So, you know, one way to improve your, your energy level is by increasing your sugar, uh, blood sugar, uh, directly, let's say with supplements or like you're saying a, a meal, but then the other way is through energy. You know, I went through something about a year ago. I wouldn't say that I was um, severely overweight, but I, 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 about a year ago, lost around 40 pounds. And part of the reason I did that wasn't, you know, because I thought that I looked bad because uh, I think I, I, I looked okay, but it was primarily because I wanted to have more energy. And I realized that, you know, the extra weight that I was carrying was burning energy um, excessively. And so I wanted to preserve and conserve my energy. And then I think we would all agree that more sleep is more is probably the most important thing you could do. You know, sleep is mother nature's miracle drug. You know, I mean, when you when you sleep more your immune system improves, your mood improves, uh, even your skin, you know, you, you, your, your skin is more naturally moisturized and healthier. Your, your complexion is healthier. You actually have more energy the more that you sleep. And so, you know, those would be a couple of things that I would certainly recommend. And, uh, you know, without a doubt, um, you know, I, I, I'll, I do eat, I eat five meals a day. So back to your uh, point of the whole, uh, you know, meals and blood sugar. Now they're not large meals. So <laughs> it's not, I didn't say I have five feasts a day, you know, uh, but I have five meals a day, meaning I'll have a protein bar uh, or a smoothie, you know, or a piece of fruit, maybe a banana, maybe an apple or an orange. I'm not sure what kind of fruit uh, you would have access to, but 
but you don't have to eat a lot, but, but just a little bit will help for sure. And, uh, and I hope that's helpful to you. And thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you for nice answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think AB are going to show, right? So what are the branches yeah, I, of coaching, right? Yeah, so, let me bring my screen up here and I'll just show you um, if it's okay. The uh, the 10 areas here. I just want to get them both on a page. Um, sure. Okay, here we go. Whoops. Those who are waiting, and uh, in the meantime, you get a link, right, on the comment box. So, so please fill it up, and if you really think that you want to level up, you want to really enhance your performance, people management skill, emotional agility, and also interpersonal communication ability, and how to bring best out of people, right? So we can reach you out later on, definitely, yes. Yes, Abe. We can see. So that's great. Thank you. So here's the 10 areas that we have uh, certification in. The first is life coach, and that is the foundational level. And this is so important because uh, in that foundational level, uh, you learn the science of flourishing. So you understand in that level, what are the factors that allow human beings to flourish and then the second area is, uh, as you can tell, relationships. The third is parenting. The fourth is career. Uh, the fifth is uh, wellness. And then uh, let me share the next page here. Um, in one moment, I'll just go to that next page. Uh, here we go. And I'll bring my screen back up again. And the sixth is leadership. The seventh is business. The eighth is creativity. The ninth is workplace. And then the 10th is sales. And so what essentially happens in all of them is that at the foundational level, we understand how to flourish. And then on top of that, we learn the key success factors for a parent in the parenting certification or the key success factors for a leader in the leadership coaching or the key success factors for a business in the business coaching designation. Now, you don't have to take these in order and some people will only ever take the first one, uh, which is the foundational level, the certified flourishing life coach training. Um, that one is the prerequisite for everything else. But once you've taken that first one, you could go right into career coach or leadership coach or any type of coach that you wanted to. And we set that up really because we want to ensure that all of the people who go through the program have a good grounding in the science of flourishing. I Thank you. I, I believe uh, it answers a lot of questions, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. If there is any other question for Abe, I know it's already over nine. Uh, we have scheduled an hour. So Abe, feel free, uh, right? So, uh, I mean, some extra time if you have. If you don't have, that's also okay. I can continue and extend 15 minutes and to have some questions and also respond on the behalf and also uh, some information that I can also give. So. It is up to you since time is over and we know that. So, so choose as you have time in your hand. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm happy to stick around for five more minutes. If there's any right. last questions, that would be great. All right. Okay. So brilliant. So another five minutes to get bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, would you mind to ask directly? If you're looking forward, Certification, coaching, why, what, what, when, you know, benefit. Okay, I stop now. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum. Yes, please speak in English if possible. If not, I can translate. Sir, 
today actually I have many questions, but a lot of laudations to Sir Abbe Brown and feel very happy to attend there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate and also acknowledge. Yes, Mr. Rahat Shikdar, PhD, uh, you had a question. All right. In the box to Abe, right? You had sent to Abe directly, I believe. I mean, that's the text looks like Abe. So do you have any question in, in the inbox? Or Mr. Rahat, would you mind please to speak it up, right? Uh, and ask the questions. Okay, uh, yes, uh, Andre, um, thank you for this uh, uh, event. It's a, such an uh, important event, especially given this uh, pandemic situations. Uh, my pleasure to be part of this session. However, uh, I was, uh, I am sorry that I a bit late, but uh, still I wonder if I would have a question like, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Abbe, I mean, uh, I know that uh, there are people across the world, I mean, you know, supposedly they are uh, very great people, say for some scientist or some noble man, you know. So we learned that they had uh, really a very few hours of sleep in their uh, 24 by seven, right? It's, it's very less than uh, the optimum level. So uh, you are talking about the flourish, uh, flourishing with your mind and then sleep is a kind of core thing for human mind. Of course it is scientifically and practically both. But uh, how did they survive without sleeping for a uh, <laughs> tiny period, you know? And then well, a lot of people, even we can see around us that uh, there are people uh, um, not sleeping properly, but they are delivering excellent. They are doing uh, good in their health as well. So how do we explain in this situation? I mean, is there any spiritual power or extraordinary body config, uh, physical configuration? Yeah. Yeah. So I, my, my take on that, uh, and I appreciate the question. Thank you very much. And my approach to answering is that there's always exceptions to the rule. You know, it doesn't matter what field you go into. There are some people, individuals who, for whatever reason, you know, it doesn't seem like the rules apply, you know, and, and I'll use the example of the four minute mile. We all know the story that for thousands of years, you know, people all over the world tried to run one mile in four minutes. And no one was able to do that until the 1950s when a man named Roger Bannister was the first one, at least, who was recorded to break that barrier. Now, you know, there, there, were, there were then many thousands who have broken that barrier since then. And I think that there are always exceptions, you know, some individuals who get by, let's say, on four hours sleep a night, and it appears as though they are accomplishing incredible amounts of, of, uh, of accomplishments. But, you know, what I would say is this, um, most people, uh, what, what would be the best advice is to master the basics first, the fundamentals first, eat healthy foods. Make sure you get your sleep, make sure you exercise. And then once you're mastering those things, then you could start gradually cutting back, for example, on your sleep. And, you know, you, you may, wouldn't go from eight hours to four hours. Maybe you'd go from eight hours to six or eight hours to seven. And then you start to test the impact on your body. Here's what I've discovered. A lot of people want to be the exception to the rule when they haven't even yet figured out how to follow the rule themselves. <laughs> you know, it's like they want to build this great house on top of a foundation that they haven't laid. And so I always tell people, master the basics. And then once you master the basics, it's, it's amazing what you can do. Uh, because yes, you know, you can push those limits and you can break that four minute mile. You know what I mean? But, but not without understanding the basics to begin with. And so I hope that that is helpful and thank you for the question. Thank you, Abe. Thank you so much for your time. So Abe is departing. So ladies and gentlemen, please give your big hands to appreciate Abe. And uh, thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Abe. So I'm Thanks here for the opportunity. five to six minutes. 
uh, who wants Abe departs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abe. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Heather. Uh, if you want to stay here, that's fine. So next five or six minutes, I'm going to share you some of the information from us. Uh, all right. So since that all of you came here, right? As you know that we are running, you know, many webinars. Like tomorrow, we have another webinar on 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 success laws of Napoleon Hills. That's part two coming up, right? So tomorrow, you are most welcome to join as well. Hey, hey, Heather. So safe drive and see you soon. <laughs> if you want to stay, that's fine. So tomorrow, you are welcome to join us another webinar. That is right tomorrow, right, eight thirty p.m. So and then on Thursday. So I'm going to do another, another seminar, another webinar rather, because it's online here at the same time. And the webinar title is, this is the best time to begin entrepreneurship. So as an entrepreneur, I'm sharing the lessons I'm learning and how actually we can begin our entrepreneurial journey, right? How we can become an entrepreneur. And if any of you thinking that or believe that you have the potential and you, you want to transition yourself from wherever you are, like as a startup, as a starter. So I would welcome you also to that webinar on Thursday evening. So why I'm doing so? Because I have experience in the last one and a half year and I see, I talk to many people around, I see that people are actually now facing uncertainty to what? To life, to job, to income, to business and in, in every perspective. So I thought, what if I could help in my way to shape, you know, people, you know, to help them sharing my experience, how they can begin their entrepreneurial journey from A, B, C, D, right? What it takes to become an entrepreneur. So I have designed accordingly a four hour program, also a 10 hour program. So which I have launched already and coming soon on 13th or uh, I think uh, that's on 14th and 15th, we have four hour session on entrepreneurship blueprint where I'm going to share my bits, my pieces, because I have transitioned myself from, an, uh, from a corporate careerist to, a, to an entrepreneur. And I have built several organizations as well. Currently I'm having five enterprises, five ventures, even though those are small, but these are good enough for me. I'm having 20 people working currently to contribute into this journey. So. I'm a passionate as a, in one side, and a speaker, trainer, and coach, at the same time, entrepreneur. I'm building enterprises. So I want to share with you the, the, the small nuggets, some blueprints, some, you know, some steps, some process, which is time tested over a period of decades and hundreds of years. In four years, I'm going to show you uh, how you can actually put your thoughts, your ideas into the parameter and test it out to your market, like to customer, to niche, to you know, create the brand, also the pricing and how to generate the revenue and how to adjust accordingly. Because a lot of us would do a mistake. What mistake we do? We mistake jumping into things, nothing wrong. But before jumping into wholeheartedly, also nothing wrong to learn a bit, right? To understand and uh, to have some knowledge and some process and methods, you know, to put it as a test, right? Whether the, your idea, how it will work. So long as to short, I want to welcome you to that session as well, to test your entrepreneurship journey. So that's 40, uh, 15, 14th and 15th. So I'm going to put a link and that's really a four hour session in two days in evening time. If you're interested, I'm going to give you an offer. Definitely an offer is very simple. Our usual program, because this is what I'm going to share to help you. It's not fully that way commercial, but yet to put some value into it, I put a price tag. It's very nominal, only $10. If you know, those are listening from outside, but those are internally, you know, I want to give you also you know, less than $10, <laughs> which is already 950 taka reduced price, but if you're going to decide by tomorrow, it's only 750 taka, uh, less than $10. Why I am doing this is actually, uh, because I have seen and I am I'm looking into the lens, a lot of people actually burning, you know, a lot of people are jumping into, but 
what it could be if I share my little knowledge and some tools so that you can see in advance before putting hundreds of thousands of taka into or you know, life into that track, right? So that's the whole thing I wanted to share with you. So I think here is the link. Uh, if you want to join, feel free to reach out and, and experience with us and join with me tomorrow or the day after. If you don't want to join the small paid course, that's okay. But it's my responsibility that I want to share with you. That's what I'm going to do it side by side. If any question, please ask me in the next couple of minutes and then we can close it. Assalamu alaikum, sir, Jackie speaking. Alaikum salam, thank you. Thank sir, you. in which day Napoleon Hill webinar will be held on, sir? May I know? Tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, it, it's, that's Thursday, right? Tomorrow's Thursday. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you. tomorrow. Tomorrow, thank you. Yes. Any Mr. other question? Yes, Mr. Kamrul. <clears throat> on our entrepreneurship program or anything? Yes, yes, yes please. I have a question on your Thank entrepreneurship you, sir. program. Now you said uh, that is um, uh, four sure. hours program or 10 hours, which one? Uh, the, 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 the next course is next course is four hours in two sessions. It's, it's going to be four to five hours. Okay, that is on uh, 14th and 15th, am I right? Correct, correct. Okay. Please send me the link or ask somebody who uh, called me from Bangladesh here. Uh, I forgot a Jannat. She could give me the link. I would like to join there. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much. Definitely. Uh, uh, you know, where, we have... are you, where are you now based? Uh, I'm Kale? based in Dhaka. Dhaka, oh, certainly. Yeah, Dhaka. I see. Then I can reach you. Please put your yes. number or phone number. I thought that you are not in the country. Anyway. I am in country. I'm collaborating my time. business. Uh, with Canadian very organization. Guy. Very young Thank and you. smart guy. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your compliment. Yes, I'm going to share you in, a, in, in personal chat my number. Uh, right. So, or Janna will give you my number too, right? So, uh, and I'm going to share. So quickly, can my team, I'm asking my team to share my number to sir so that he can contact with me as well. But so any I, other question? Let me give you a piece of advice. The point you said about, the, you know, sharing knowledge. Can I give you a piece of tips with my experience? Sure, please. Of now, course, here you want to share for the, yes, these are the benefits. Besides that, you could add one more point. You know, sharing knowledge is a great thing as per our religion also. This is something like called Sadga Zaria. Keep that one in mind, right, as, as, that one as first priority, that for Sadga Zaria, I'm doing it. And rest of the things Absolutely. will come out of the building. Your business, Absolutely. learning, everything. Absolutely. Knowledge, sharing knowledge, and then if with that knowledge, if somebody can uh, do something, that you will carry forward throughout your life and in your next life as well. So Brilliant. Thank you, up. sir. Okay. Thank you. That's what I'm doing every day. So lot, almost every day I have free webinar. You know, either I house it on Zoom, either you know today is free webinar, tomorrow is free webinar. Thursday yes, also free webinar. Whenever you have Almost. a idea or intention that you are doing it as Sadgajariya. Thank you. I'm doing it. Most and I would love to have you on the team as well, right? So okay. I'm going to talk to you. So you have wealth of experience. I'm sure it can be it can be handy too. <laughs> so I would love okay. to have you to talk to you soon. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you that very is, much. That is I hope you have received my number. I hope you have received my number. Yes, that yeah, is really I, I already that, provided. Uh, uh, Kamal Bhal always doing this type of free webinar. It's a really, <laughs> very, he, I, I think he's not actually that much professional. What he's doing actually is free webinar is very um, appreciable. And then really, yeah. I appreciate the support. <laughs> like, I mean, in terms of commercialize, so, you know, I put it secondary. Uh, even though there is everybody who should earn by doing what we actually best at doing. So I do that in a personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do, I do uh, some training for organizations. You know, that's my regular profession as I'm doing and you know, giving this training, coaching to multinational, to local organizations and also coaching individual as well. So, and also I do some very you know, inexpensive public program for the betterment of common people, you know, people in general. 
And that is one in one side that is an entrepreneurship. And another side is how to actually set our mindset. I have another program called Master Your Mindset to Master Your Life. And that, that's again, very inexpensive program. I'm putting into my 15 years of lessons, learnings into you know, condensed you know, part one of Master Your Mindset. And that's very inexpensive program. I do it publicly, you know, uh, uh, so that I want people to take benefit out of it. Why? Because I see uh, the, the path I have walked, maybe a lot of us will have broken our legs. We have experienced the injury, right? So I want people not to break the leg, not to experience the injury too, because I have done it and I have experienced it. So that, that's the reason actually I want to give a caution. Everything is not rosy and everything is not as easy as, you, as it appeared to be, unless you're a devotee, unless you are very passionate, unless you're very obsessed. So for that, you need to take a small step together and that's the reason actually I'm doing some, you know, a small way public program commercially, very low uh, paid program. Thank you. I hope and believe that, you know, a lot of you, you have the passion, you have the possibility, you have the talent, but the most important thing is, I want to ask you, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Do you have this self-confidence? You know, do you trust your guts? Do you trust your feeling? Do you trust your ability before trusting any other external thing? You know, any certificate, any organization, nothing can do, nothing can do. This is my, my way of telling and giving a question. Nothing can do unless you're confident to yourself because that's the key. And to build this confidence, you got to walk a step, one step at a time. And that's the mistake we do also. We want to go up towards 100 story building and we, we wake up, we see 100 story building and we are afraid and we don't take a step. And that's my caution. Rather walk one stair at a time, take rest, assess yourself and then go next step, next stair. That can help Nala because mai. that's you know, my life lessons. Nala. Thank you so much. If there is no other question, I, I'm, I'm going to close it tonight. If any question, last question I can take. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. If no question, I, I can close it. Thank you, Heather, for hanging so long. And thank you, everyone, thank you. international. Heather. Yes, good night, sweet dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Everyone, stay well. Thank stay you. Healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.